Hi there, and welcome to the Praying Christian Women podcast. I'm Jamie Hampton, and I am here once again, just have the, the privilege and honor of being here with Julie Watson from the truehealthlife.com. And um, for those of you that have been listening, we got to hear her story a couple of weeks ago about her journey through fear and loss and just being able to push through that and to live out a love relationship with God. So if you haven't already, you might want to go back and listen to our episode two weeks ago um, about that. But today we have brought her back because um, her ministry and business through truehealthlife.com is just something Alana and I have, have really wanted to talk about more on the podcast. Um, just this, this merging of physical health with spiritual health. And so that's where, uh, what we're going to kind of be going into today is more of how you can enter into greater physical health. Um, and how, what role prayer and God plays in this. So Julie, thank you so much for allowing us to interview you twice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, Jamie. I'm happy to do it twice. <laughs> well, we just, we would like to know how you became passionate about helping people to create greater health and wellness. What was, what was the thing that kind of launched you into that passion? Um, I've always been interested in health, but definitely much more so after the loss of my first husband to cancer. You know, he was 35 years old at the time. And um, it's really strange that a 35 year old man should die of cancer. This isn't right. <laughs> um, but after that time, I went through some of my own health challenges as well. Um, just dealing with the grief and a lot of the physical stress that I was putting on my body after his passing. And um, I think in going through that own journey of healing myself, um, I really want other women to be able to experience the type of health that I have experienced. And I, you know, I look around and I think God has just kind of put this burden on my heart. I look around and I just see so many women struggling just to get through their days instead of, you know, thriving and stepping into these lives that um, he has for them because um, health isn't, um, something that, uh, you know, a lot of us are experiencing in this, in our society today. And so, um, I think, you know, as, as time has gone on and, and I've gone through my own healing, um, just really feeling God put that burden on my heart and noticing that women need this message. They need to hear that there is more, um, and that, um, health is, uh, a way of getting, or one way to get to <laughs> a part of getting to that more that he has for them. Yeah, no, I and I think today more than ever, it just seems like women in particular are just experiencing so many um, even debilitating health issues. I mean, there's there's just even even uh, mental health issues that can be related to physical issues mm -hmm. like anxiety and depression or, you know, chronic fatigue and different autoimmune disorders. And I mean, it just seems like more than ever, this is an issue. And we're hearing this from our listeners. There are um, just, there are a lot of struggles out there. And it's amazing the the link between physical unwellness and and a blocked prayer life. I mean, it, they, they really do go hand in hand. So this is why we really want to talk with you is, um, you know, how do you see our physical well-being intersecting with our spiritual well-being and, and from your own personal experience as well? They definitely affect each other, like you said. Um, and I personally don't believe that we can have true health without having that um, spiritual well-being and that love relationship with God. Um, there's just something about knowing and trusting in God as the director of our lives that really brings us the peace and joy um, and calmness that affects us on a physiological level and, and even on a cellular level, really. Um, when we are in that place of confidence, when we are in that security in Him, we experience less stress. And um, I also think, you know, the opposite is true. If we want to live a life for God, we can't exclude our physical health. In the church, we talk so much about guarding our hearts and guarding our minds, but we don't often talk about our physical health. And it really has a big impact on our hearts and minds. And our physical health really does affect 
um, the kingdom work that we're able to do here in the world for God. Um, we need we need help that's going to support us in those efforts. So it really is a kind of a two way <laughs> street. You know, they they both affect each other. Yeah, I like the way you did that because I I was kind of thinking yes, you you know you need physical health to allow you to be the best spiritual self that you can be. But I love the way you turned that around. That if someone claims to be physically healthy they're they're missing a huge component of that physical health if they're not spiritually healthy and um and that god plays a huge part in that um so what role do you see because we're a prayer podcast <laughs> what role do you see specifically prayer playing in the journey to physical wellness well prayer is that gateway if you will um to spiritual health. It's our primary way of connecting with God. Um, It's where we share our hearts with him. We, we, you know, um, also receive from him (laughs) to our hearts. Um, It's where we hear of his plans for us, where we can get encouragement and strength. Um, And really, if we are wanting to live out the lives that he's calling us to, we're not going to really know how to do that unless we're in communication with him. Um, And I think one of the great things about that is when we are following that path, when we are in communication with him and we're aligning with his will for us, that's really when we're going to get the greatest life satisfaction. Um, We can eat right, we can exercise right, but ultimately our greatest health isn't going to happen if we're also not stepping into who God has created us individually to be. And prayer is the place where we're going to figure that out. Yeah. I love that because we can't just stuff ourselves into a box and say, Mm -hmm. I want to look like so-and-so, you know, or I want to be able to accomplish this goal, this physical goal that someone else did, because maybe God's not calling you. Maybe your, you know, journey to physical wellness includes something else. And I mean, I find myself doing that just, um, you know, asking for wisdom a lot for, physical things, you know, what is, you know, I, I see this problem and how am I going to get to the place of getting past it? And, and a lot of that does include relying on the Holy Spirit to, to give yes. us that godly wisdom that is sometimes contrary to physical wisdom or, um, or worldly wisdom. Um, right. So yeah, that's, I think that's really important. Yeah. That, um, I talk a lot about that in my book, the, um, relationship with the Holy Spirit because just like you're saying, you know, we can, we can jump on every diet train out there, and, but n- you know, none of us is a particular diet. God didn't create us to function as the keto diet. Like I'm not the keto diet. I'm not the um, Atkins diet. I'm not, I'm not the paleo diet. <laughs> um, some of the pieces of the diets may work for us, but really each of us is unique. Um, I met a doctor that doesn't have the right digestive enzymes to digest potatoes. So, you know, potatoes aren't necessarily a bad food to eat, but for her, it isn't a good food to eat because her body can't handle them. So um, I think it really is important as we develop that intuition um, with the Holy Spirit um, that, you know, we can start off with some of the basics of health, but he's really going to help us to figure out what's going to work best for us. Yes, absolutely. Um, Well, one thing that I really was excited about when I was looking at your book um, is, well, actually, okay, so I don't know if it was your book or if it was a separate thing, so I might be (laughs) misspeaking. Hold on, but no no worries. (laughs) Do you include affirmations in your book or was that a separate download that I got? Okay, so your book includes affirmations. I love that. But you also got it, got them by email. Yeah. I did I also get them. Send those. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, well, while we're there, so how, how <laughs> would someone get these affirmations by email if they wanted to do that right now? They can go to my website, thetruehealthlife.com. And if you go to the blog tab um, along the right hand side of that page, there is a spot where you can put your name and email address in, and you will um, be signed up to get my blog post uh, notifications when those go out every week. But you also, as a, my thank you for signing up for those, um, you get a free printable PDF of uh, positive faith-based affirmations that you can print out and you can hang um, and look at to encourage you. That is great. And, you know, Alana and I have 
I, I think we actually had a podcast episode that included affirmations, but just, um, but just to clarify, we're not talking about, you know, like new age affirmations, like we create our own realities. We're talking about very biblically based and, mm -hmm. and spiritual affirmations that are speaking God's word into, into our lives. And, um, and it does create, um, wellness. You know, I really believe that. I believe that God's word is so powerful. And I just loved that about your book yes. and about that. Um, because I believe that that is, you know, affirmations are a type of prayer. And mm -hmm. so, um, so yeah, I really, I, I love the fact that you have those included. So what is it about biblical affirmations? Um, what do you see the role that they, that they play in physical and spiritual wellness? I see the biblical affirmations versus the more secular, like, like we were talking about, like you mentioned just a moment ago, I really see them as um, reminding us of God's truth, of our identity in him. Um, and they really, uh, if we repeat these biblical affirmations to ourselves, they really do help to put us in a more healthy place mentally and emotionally which also affects us physically. <laughs> so um, I, just, I just love that they are a truth that we can stand on of who yeah. we are in him. Yeah. Yeah, no, and I think, I think that is really what it is, is standing on truth and, you know, not saying I will have a perfect body by next <laughs> month. You know, it's saying this is who I am in God. And those things can move you toward um, – true wellness, you know, physically and spiritually. So mm -hmm. if you're interested in that, um, you can go to the truehealthlife.com and you can go to Julie's blog tab and you can sign up for those affirmations. Or you can look at her book, which um, I would like you to tell us a little bit about your book. Okay, so my book is called True Health, A Woman's Guide to Loving Her Body, Loving Her Life, and Loving Her God. And um, I'll try to keep it short. <laughs> it's kind of a long story on, on this book. I knew that I wanted to write a book on health and I wanted to include, um, you know, this faith piece. What does it mean as, as Christian women to be healthy? Um, and um, I had pretty much written most of the book. I had the first draft pretty much done when I was on a run one day and I, I believe the Holy Spirit put it on my heart. Um, at that time, I had no title for the book. I didn't know exactly how it was going to be organized. I just kind of was putting all the health information that I knew into the book. And then on this run, the Holy Spirit um, put the word true in my mind. And I, I love that because I want my life to be based on his truth, all of it, including my health. And so I love the word true. Um, but the... Um, True health, actually, that word true is an acronym that stands for the four pillars of health that I talk about in my book. And again, um, these are the pillars that uh, the Holy Spirit gave to me on the run. So I had to repeat them in my head over and over on the run. So I wouldn't forget them by the time I got back to my car. <laughs> um, <laughs> but the T stands for um, the truth about health. And this is where I just talk about the nuts and bolts, um, what works for most people. So this is really a good kind of basic place to start. The R is for realizing your potential, and that's where I talk about um, mental, emotional, physical health, um, and the U is for understanding you and your body, and I talk there about um, what I was talking about just you know a minute ago, how we are all different, um, we're all physically different, we all prefer different things, and so how do you understand yourself better, and how do you use that to achieve better health? And then the E is for enlightenment by the Holy Spirit. And this is where I talk about that relationship um, and how critical it is to our health um, and how our health really is a love response to him. Um, it's something that we do for him because not being in good health can really hinder the work that he has for us. And it can hinder us in stepping into the life that he's called us each individually to. Um, but it also is an effort that we do with him because he is available to us. He is a part of our health journey. He is a helper. The Holy Spirit is a, our helper and our guide and our comforter. And so I really see health as um, not only for something that we do for him, but something that we do with him as well. Um, so that is the, the true um, health uh, acronym and the, and the four pillars 
of true health. That's great. And I really love that what you said about, um, and I'm paraphrasing, I think, I can't remember your wording, but just basically our, our health is um, pursuing health in our bodies is an act of worship. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it, it is a spiritual thing. And I always think of um, offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship, that something physical mm. could be a spiritual act of worship, you know, offering our bodies for God's purposes. And I believe that includes being stewards of, of the temple of the Holy Spirit. And so that's just, that's a really neat insight there. I love that. Right. Um, and that's where that, that's where that, um, my, when I um, heard that from the Holy Spirit, enlightenment by the Holy Spirit as a pillar, I thought, okay, where do I start my search for this? And so first Corinthians six nineteen and 20 talks about, um, you know, do you not know that, um, your bodies are not your own. You were bought at a price. And it talks about being a temple of the Holy Spirit. And I thought, okay, if my body is a temple of the Holy Spirit, what does that mean my body needs to be able to do? Who is he and what does he need to be able to do in my life so that I am a temple he can use? So that's really um, how, where I started and how I kind of fleshed out that last pillar on health. That's great. Well, what practical advice would you have for someone that would like to move toward physical wellness, but just doesn't really even know where to begin? Um, yes, I have a, I have a couple of tips. Um, I do offer a free seven day health jumpstart on my website. So if you're thinking, I don't know where to start with food or what kind of recipes to make, um, that seven day health jumpstart is something that you can sign up for. Um, each day for seven days, you'll get a health tip. Um, it might be on sleep, it might be on hydration, some different things like that as a kind of a way to help get you started. And the challenge itself includes a couple of downloads. Um, there's a guide that you can use to make meals for seven days. All the recipes are included. There's a grocery list included, a list of what to prep every day <laughs> in preparation for the next day and, you know, even what to cook during the current day. Um, so that's, that's a place to get started. And it can be a lot because, you know, it is information on every single meal. So use it in the way that works for you. You may not follow every single meal every day, but um, this will still give you some ideas on what um, healthy foods are to look at. Um, and then of course the tips that you get each day will be helpful as well. Um, I also, and I, I feel like this is maybe a shameless plug and I, I certainly don't mean to do any self-promotion here, but um, my intent with writing the book really was to um, help uh, people who maybe haven't even really looked at health much have a place to start. Um, so a lot of what I include is just basic information um, and then encourage you to kind of build from there. So that would be another place to, to start if you want to check that out. Um, and one thing that I would say to really keep in mind is that this is a journey. Um, so don't worry about waking up tomorrow and um, for starting tomorrow and for every day of the rest of your life, you know, having a set workout program and eating completely clean and all these other things starting tomorrow. It is okay to start small and build. And that actually is more sustainable than trying to make a whole bunch of changes at one time. So just focus on small improvements every day. If you focus on a 1% improvement every day, that's 365% by the end of the year. <laughs> so it's okay. And I think, um, it's more sustainable that way, but also um, so much of what, what is happening with our health is a reflection of what's happening in our lives. And so if we just kind of start making small changes, even if we have, you know, sometimes having the two steps back before we move forward again, it's okay. Um, and instead of feeling like it has to be done perfectly, use those instances to kind of get curious about what's going on and what you really are needing. So, you know, if you start off and you're, you have a couple of days of traction and then you eat a pan of brownies, um, use that as an opportunity to kind of get curious about what's happening with you. So instead of beating yourself up, ask yourself, hmm, okay, I did this. I wonder why I did this. Um, and just use it as, a, as an opportunity to learn. So give yourself grace. It doesn't have to be done perfectly and, um, you know, progress over perfection and trade in uh, judgment for curiosity. And those things are really going to help you on your journey. That's great. The, the panda brownies thing, I can totally relate to that. So, <laughs> you know, the, hello. 
<laughs> I'm, I'm a really curious person. No, I love that curiosity, you know, instead of condemning yourself right. to be curious, what made me do that? You know, and I, I really think that that's, that is important to, um, so I, yeah, I haven't heard that before either. And I like that just to dig, dig deeper. What, what are my motives? What are the things that are, that are causing me to do these unhealthy things? So, well, that is such good information, Julie. I am really excited to hear from our listeners how, some of these things are helping them. And I, I really, I know that there are going to be people out there taking advantage of this because, um, you know, whether it's the affirmations or um, some of these, you know, this jump start um, that they can do, you have lots of great free resources. And I, I hope they'll also check out your book and um, just look a little bit more into some of the things you have to offer. So thank you so much for being here with us. You're and so if our listeners want to find you, where, where are you located? Well, you can find me on my website, which is the true I am also on Instagram at true dot health dot life. And I'm also on Facebook at the true health life. That's great. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. <laughs> In case you hadn't heard, Praying Christian Women is now on Instagram at Praying Christian Women. And we are so excited to be partnering with Julie to offer you a chance to get her book, True Health, absolutely free. To enter the giveaway, all you have to do is three things. First, follow Praying Christian Women at Praying Christian Women on Instagram. Second, follow Julie on Instagram at true.health.life. And then tag a friend that you think would also enjoy Julie's book, True Health, in the comments of one of our giveaway posts. And that's it. Then you'll be entered. So don't miss the giveaway. Follow Praying Christian Women at Praying Christian Women. Follow Julie at true.health.life and enter into the comments the name of someone that you think would really love the book. Winners are going to be chosen this Thursday night at midnight Eastern time. That's February 14th which is Valentine's Day, and we would love for you to be a winner. Do you see what I did there? Valentine's Day, love. So we will be announcing the winner on Friday. So the giveaway ends at midnight on Thursday night, Eastern time. So don't miss it. And we will let you know who the winner is on Friday, and we are just really excited to see who it is. Again, if you, if you want to find Julie, you can go to thetruehealthlife.com and find all the stuff we're talking about. So thanks, Julie. And I'm, I'm going to close us with prayer before we go. God, we just thank you so much for this opportunity to talk about the merging of our physical bodies and our spiritual well-being and our prayer lives. We just invite you into our, our journey toward becoming spiritual well, spiritually well and being stewards of our bodies um, as we just invite you into that process. We pray for your wisdom that is not the wisdom the world gives, God. We just ask that you would guide each one of us into the path that we need to take to be good stewards, not to be spiritual or physical superstars, but, but to be healthy and what that means for us as an individual. And um, we just pray that you would be with Julie as she just ministers to others through her passion to help others um, enhance their physical lives and their spiritual lives. And, and we just pray your blessing on her, God, and on her ministry and her business and her family. In Jesus' name, amen. You've been listening to the Praying Christian Women podcast. If you're looking for more prayer resources, head over to prayingchristianwomen.com slash new year to find out more about Alana's Praying in the New Year online retreat. That's prayingchristianwomen.com slash new year, all one word. The Praying Christian Women podcast, changing the world one prayer at a time.